you guys what's up welcome back to lipstick and curls world i appreciate you so much for being here with me and to all of my old subscribers people who have been rocking with me for years i love y'all like we're here you know what i'm saying like we've been here for years we know each other like I feel y'all's presence all the time because I see you guys. I see y'all who literally comment on all my stuff, who watch all of my stuff. And I just so, so, so appreciate y'all for, for sticking with me through all the years, through the, the just everything, honestly. And to my newbies out there, I am so happy you joined the team. I'm so happy you joined the crew. Like, we're, we're excited to be here. And I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to do what I love for a living and being able to share myself with you all and I always say this to people that I have the best job in the world because I get to walk and work in my purpose and in my gifts the fact that I can be creative for a living the fact that I can literally do things that make me genuinely happy and be able to pay my bills by doing that that is still a concept that is just so insanely just I still can't wrap my mind around it and I'm not supposed to so let's go ahead and get into this video I wanted to do a chatty video for you guys because I just felt it on my heart to talk to you and I knew that I wanted to come to you guys super real and honest about my journey and YouTube and where I'm at right now. So many of you all uh, message me and, and and let me know on a daily basis how inspired you are about uh, because of my journey and like how I post and my content and I that is my goal you know that's that's the goal is to create beautiful things and beautiful content that you guys can appreciate and love and gain inspiration from and then then take what I'm showing you and do something great with it in your own lives, whether it be a new hairstyle you're trying out, whether it be rocking your natural hair, whether it be trying a new makeup look, whatever it is. The goal is to help you guys feel better and feel great about yourselves through me just showing you how I do that for myself. You know, I think that it's it's a real thing when you can see somebody and they're an example. Like we are very visual people, right? And if you don't see someone who looks like you doing something that you at you aspire to be or to do, it kind of makes it feel like it's not real, right? Like if you don't see somebody that looks like you in a place of power or a place of, of bliss, then you don't really think that that can be you one day. And so that's the, the beauty and the kind of um, caveat to exploring and trying out new things that other people around you or other people like you are not doing is that it's kind of uncharted territory and you're really going into the darkness of like I don't know what this is gonna be I don't know what this is gonna look like when I get there but I just know that somehow some way this is gonna end up being a good thing so this video is my secret to doing what I do uh, tangibly and practically here on YouTube, on social media in general, um, kind of talking about what the main thing was that got me to this place. So are y'all ready for it? Are, are y'all ready to hear the secret of how all this happens? The secret is God. The secret is faith. The secret is being one and understanding that I do not make decisions by myself it's me and god being one with god being one with my spirit being very understanding of where i'm supposed to be and who i'm supposed to be because in this space beauty social media there is a lot of things that pull you in different directions. There's a ton of trends and a ton of common practices that happen in this world that in general, I mean, even outside of beauty and social media, just in general, but like, let's talk about here, okay? Like, let's let's micro it out and kind of bring it in so we can have something to relate to, okay? So that's this is the space that I'm gonna be talking from in this video. So in this space, beauty, fashion, social media, Instagram, YouTube, there's a lot of things that look like they uh, 
work, you know, like popular things to do in order to gain more of a following, to gain more opportunities with brands, to gain more exposure, to get more hype around you, to become more popular. There are certain practices and things that people do to gain that. Not all of them are godly. And I do not want you guys to feel like I'm out here trying to say that anybody that does anything that's not of God is condemned or anything. I just know what has worked in my life and my other friends and family members who also let their lives be led by God and how they are turning out is a lot better than my other friends and people I know that may not allow God to run their lives, if that makes sense. So I want this to be really uh, not something that you feel judged or you feel attacked, but low key though, if this is triggering you, then you've got some soul searching to do, for real. Because anytime that something somebody else says makes us feel a way, it means that there's something deeper there. So when we think about, you know, God and like, you know, quote unquote Christians, there's a lot of people who fall or claim that they're Christian, right? But for me, I'm only speaking from my own experience with God, my own experience with being a Christian. And that's the only place I can come from. So just know that everything I say in this video is coming from a place of love, a place of genuineness, a place of just wanting to give you guys the key. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of things that happen online that are just not going to work out. So for example, get quick, get rich quick schemes online are not cool. At the end of the day, Anytime something feels like you're getting ahead for hardly nothing and it makes you feel a way, it makes you feel like you have to uh, sacrifice your values for, it's not the right move. If your gut feeling, your intuition is telling you like, mm, I don't know about that, don't do it. That's God trying to tell you that's not the right way for you to go. The number one thing I feel like people allow to overtake them in this world is money. And God wants us to be fruitful, right? He wants us to be successful. He wants us to live blessed lives. He wants us to be able to bless ourselves, our family members, our friends. He wants us to be able to do things at a level in which we're doing his work, but also we are enjoying life. And so, and he wants us to be happy. But here's the thing. When you obsess over money, that's when that, that idea takes a turn. Because what can the devil do? The devil distorts. The devil takes good things and tries to distract you from them or tries to make you uh, go a different route and make things look just like or very similar to what God will want you to do, but it's not quite what God will want you to do. So for example, I had a situation last year where I talked about it a little bit on Snapchat, which is a while ago because I haven't been on Snapchat in forever, but it was a situation where I had a brand come to me with a large opportunity, biggest check I had ever seen, okay, and the way that my spirit is set up and the way that I value y'all so much. And I knew, okay, that, excuse me, that understanding that I'm only here because God wants me to be here. I knew that if it wasn't completely 100% right, I could not do it. So I ended up take, looking at this contract, going back and forth with my management and the brand and going back and forth and it just wasn't going to work. There were a couple things in the contract, very small things, um, not, not according to the, the products, not according to, um, you know, the brand of ethos or anything like that. It was just specific things in the contract that I couldn't necessarily speak to. So I couldn't necessarily speak to, um, 
quote unquote guarantees that a product was going to do something for somebody's hair. I couldn't do that. You guys know, I never tell you guys, this is going to do this to your hair. I never say those words because I never want to sell y'all a dream. Okay. When you're working with hair products and people's different hair, uh, hair types, Nothing is going to work the exact same on me that is going to work on somebody else. And that that goes for anything, okay? That goes for anything because we all live in different climates. We all have different genes and we all have different curl types. Even if our hair, quote unquote, looks the same, we all have different hair. So there was a couple things in there, with that being the main one, that I was like, I can't say that. Like, I can't say that statement while promoting your products because that is not going to, that's not going to go over well with my audience. And I had to walk away. I walked away from a very large sum of money at that time, my biggest contract. And I needed that money. <laughs> I needed it. I, I was like, you know what? This could really have me comfortable for a while. But I said, you know, no. I know that this is... God giving me a test to say, I know what you're doing. I know that you have the skills to do this. You have the audience to do this. But are your values and are your morals still right? Are you still real? Are you still going to, as you move up, because this is not going to be the only opportunity you get at this level. Are you still going to remain humble? Are you still going to remain yourself? And not compromise yourself in these situations. Because not to say that I believe that Satan works in very like overt ways. Sometimes Satan just throws out little pebbles at us. Like he'll just like flick a little water at you to distract you. To get your head from looking this way to look over here to see what was that? What just hit my face? What was that? Where did that water come from? You got to stay focused. You got to stay focused. So even while... Satan tried to put that little line in that contract. I didn't miss it. I was like, mm, that part ain't going to work. So I walked away from it. I walked away from that contract and y'all, my heart just sunk. My heart was just like, oh my gosh, like this is too much. Like I just can't. Did I really just say no to this? And I walked away and I talked about it on Snapchat. I never set the bread. I never did anything like that. And I was just like, this is how much I love y'all. Like, this is how much I love my platform. This is how much I appreciate and how much integrity I have when it comes to what I do. And a few days later, the brand came back, offered me more money, more money, took out the things that I had issues with, and we worked together. And... That was my goal. I was like, that what showed me that's God. When you choose the right road and not all the time, it's going to seem like good or bad. It's just going to say, let's see how aware you are of how your decisions impact what you're going to do, how, how much your mind is going to impact how you move. And even at this level, I still am moving with God being the one that's 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 directing me and that is how I remain successful in this place and I know that there are multiple t things and multiple times that I've been through situations via social media and branding and things like that where I had to either step away from something or I had to speak up about something because sometimes God doesn't want us to completely exit the situation. He wants us to step up in the situation and say the right thing and make the right decisions even if it's a difficult thing to do. It was difficult for me to walk away from all that money but because I'm not obsessed with money and I'm obsessed with my passion, I'm obsessed with my purpose, I'm obsessed with living and breathing creatively and creating content on a regular basis, that that's my goal. My goal is to continue to be in that space. My goal is not to make money. It's hard to say no when you really, really need the check. When you really need it, it's hard to say no. But you have to be looking at the long game and not the short game. Because if you have faith, God is going to pay your rent. God is going to pay your utilities bill. God is going to help you get that student loan paid off, that car note paid off.
but you have to have faith in him that he's going to do those things in your life. You have to make room for him to do things in your life instead of relying on yourself to figure everything out. Because whenever I've tried to figure things out by myself, it never ends well. (laughs) It never ends well. And I end up getting a halfway good result. Like, Sometimes the result may be all right, you know, but if I would have listened to God in that situation, if I would have just made that decision with God, it, who knows how much better it could have been. But that's the thing. God is always going to be there waiting on you. It doesn't matter how many times you've made a mistake or how many times you've relied on your flesh over your faith. It doesn't matter how many times he is right there with you and he's waiting. He's waiting for you to tap him in and say, you got it. I'm just going to be here. I'm going to do my thing. But God, you got it because I understand who's in control of this thing. So that that's my secret. I, I, I kid y'all not. And through having faith, when I decided to go full time with YouTube, I had enough money to literally pay my rent and nothing else for a whole year. That's all I had when I jumped off that ledge of being full time. And that was even me being like, all right, I know that I'm going to get other deals, but this is the, and the only reason why I had that money was because I got one opportunity that gave me a large check, my first large check. And I was like, all right, if I can get this check, I'm going to have to make sure that I can keep, keep this going because if I don't, I'm going to go have to, I'm going to have to go get a job. So I jumped off that ledge and I just I had God had been pushing me to that decision for months. Uh as you guys know, many of you all know, I I was in a master's program and I graduated before I jumped off that ledge and it was really hard for me. But you know what's crazy about God is that I wasn't scared when I jumped off the ledge. I was so frustrated with my current situation that God pushed me off that ledge. God pushed me because he made me so uncomfortable, like in a bad way, like in a way that was like, I'm not supposed to be here anymore. I'm not supposed to be doing this anymore. There were situations that were happening, little things that I was just like, wow, two years ago, I would have never responded this way. Two years ago, I would have been enjoying this, but now... I hate it. I hate it. And that's the thing. Your mind can change. You grow. And when I look at my grad program, I'm like, do I regret it? Absolutely not. Because guess what? I knew that that was a blessing that God gave me at the time that I got into my program. Y'all, I had nothing before my grad program. Nothing. If you guys go watch my uh, what I don't even remember what I called it. It's like, uh, I'll link it here. It's here. Talking about that situation, talking about that time frame in my life. If you go back even further, back in 2013, when I was fresh out of my undergrad program, living in Ohio with my ex at the time, like I went through a lot of things personally uh, for a, a couple couple years or so. And when I got into my grad program, that was like my light at the end of the tunnel at that time in my life. So, and it was a way that I could sustain myself with my, with my uh, scholarship money and my, my uh, grad program money. Like I could pay my bills, you know what I'm saying? So when it came to my transition from that to doing what I do now, I knew even no matter how uncomfortable I was at that time, like how over it I was my last semester, I knew that God wanted me to finish it out. I knew that how how ungrateful of me would it have been to have been like, oh, God, I know that you want me to do this other thing now. Let me just quit this and then start this and not not even taking into account that God made things really work in my favor to even be in that place. So I think sometimes when we're frustrated in our current situations and like you see where you supposed to be, right? Like I knew, you know, in January that I was supposed to be doing what I was going to be doing in June. 
but I could not just hop up and go there. I had to work my way through. It was like a process. And I knew that it was going to say something about me and my faith in God if I didn't stick it through and finish it out and then start that new chapter. Because, oh, y'all, wow, God is really talking to me right now. So me and Mark were just talk. We were just watching a Michael Todd sermon on YouTube the other day. And if you guys haven't seen Michael Todd, he's like on another level. Amazing. Pastor Michael Todd, YouTube him. He's awesome. And we were watching his sermon at Elevation Church. And it ta- he talked a lot about, you know, Paul. No, he talked about David and Goliath, the story of David before the story of him and Goliath, right? Like how David was the son of Saul or I can't remember his father's name. Y'all don't don't quote me on this. I'm just I got the message. Okay, basically, David was out in the fields tending to the goats and the sheep and stuff. Right. And nobody, his father and his family, nobody really saw him as being a va- of value. Right. He was out in the field doing his thing. Like they didn't even really associate him with their family. It was like, he was like the, the ugly duckling of the family. You know what I'm saying? And he, God used him in a way in which when he was a kid, when he was young, he knew that he was going to be a king. But he still had to go back into the field for a long time. And the way he even got to the kingdom was that he walked into the kingdom as a servant by the fact that the king at the time was dealing with all these demons. Y'all go back and read this story in the Bible. But the king had all these demons and David's ability to play his instrument was a way to alleviate the king's demons. So he actually ends up helping the king at the time to get rid of these demons that he was suffering with. But if David would have never been in the fields tending to the sheep and playing his instrument for all that time, he would have never been able to enter the kingdom, which inevitably would get get him to the situation with Goliath, which inevitably would get him to becoming king later. So I say that to say that it's all about the process. David knew that he was going to be king, but David didn't feel a way whenever he had to be a servant. David didn't feel a way when he had to take down Goliath with a slingshot and some rocks. You know what I'm saying? So that message really hit me. And I think is the reason why I'm talking to you guys today is that we have to understand that even though we are, even though we know what our purpose is even though we know what our gifts is, and even if you don't necessarily know what your gifts are, it's about recognizing that everything has a process and that you have to make sure that you're doing what you got to do at the time and the place that you're at. So if David would not have took his time and played that instrument over and over and over again, learning the notes, understanding how to play songs and things like that, he would have never been able to be ready for that position that God was trying to put him in. So to relate that to me, to give you another example, my situation with cyberbullying for years and years and years, y'all, I thought it was, I was being punished. I thought it was something that the devil was doing to me. I thought that, you know, it was such a horrible situation. I'll link that video where I talk about that here for you guys for context. (laughs) Because this video is getting long at this point. For so many years, that was such a dark situation. So many years. And then, you know, it didn't hit me until the other day that so many of you from who, who learned of me and my sister from that situation were my first followers, were my first subscribers. Who Y'all are still here today. You know what I'm saying? Like, how beautiful is that? How beautiful... Is it that God turned something super ugly in my life into something that was going to eventually allow me to live the life that I'm living right now? Ain't that crazy? That's why God is my secret to all of this. That's why every decision I make, every brand deal that I do, me and God are making that decision together because that is the only way 
that you reach the platforms that you're supposed to be at. You cannot do this by yourself. And there are going to be so many situations that pull you and make you think, oh, I'm supposed to be doing that. Whatever she's doing over there, that's what I'm supposed to be doing to get to where I want to be. No. You're supposed to be doing what you're doing. You got to be introspective. You've got to look at who you are as a person, the gifts that you have, right? Be yourself in that and figure out what makes me, what gives me joy. What do I do that doesn't feel like work? Whatever that is, that's what you're supposed to be doing with your life. And even if right now it doesn't look like something that's lucrative, even if right now it doesn't look like something you could, you know, pay your bills and take your kids, take care of your kids with, you never know how God's going to work things out in your life. Did I think five years ago that I was going to be doing this, that I was going to be able to sustain myself on this? We just got approved for a house, y'all. We're renting. But (laughs) this house, which... I'll have to tell y'all that story in another video, but I had a moment and, um, you know, me and Mark are, are getting renting this house together and it's a beautiful, it's like my, it's like my dream. I'm like, wow, I never thought that I would be in a place where I could like be in a house, you know, be an adult and stuff, <laughs> even though I'm 27 and I'm like, you know, but it's still like a thing. And the guy uh emails us he's like your background check went well and everything but we just need you know mark's pay stubs and more information on your income and so i was like and they were like can you send your tax returns from 2017 so that we can you know make sure y'all are good so i was like okay well i can't get can't get in contact with mark right now because he's at work but here are my tax returns and they emailed me back it was like oh no worries on mark's pay stubs we don't need them y'all you're good y'all are good just on your own tax returns Y'all, it makes me emotional because for so long and in so many ways, the world makes you think that you need a man to sustain yourself. You need a man to provide for you because you can't provide for yourself. Do you see the difference between having somebody with you who provides for you because they want to and because you want them to versus being with somebody who provides for you because you need them to? Those are two separate things. God has placed me in a situation and a loving relationship where Mark provides for me. Because he wants to and because I want him to, not because I need him to. So when that moment happened yesterday, I was like, thank you, God. Thank you for confirming that at the end of the day, as long as I got you and I allow you to lead my life, I can do anything I want to. I can literally achieve anything. And that's nothing to say negatively about my man because y'all know I love Mark to death. And I'm so proud that I'm with somebody who appreciates me and allows me to feel my strength as a woman and allows me to feel proud of what I can do and simultaneously understands his position in my life, understands that he is the man in my life and that he has certain, you know, qualities and responsibilities within our relationship that he's supposed to make sure he's got taken care of but it just meant something to me to know that on my own merit we got this house so I'm gonna start you know wrapping this up and um just let you guys know that Whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're trying to figure out, because a lot of y'all, I asked y'all on Instagram what I should talk about in this video, and a lot of y'all were, you know, just asking for how did you find out what you're supposed to do in your life? Like, how did you find your purpose? How did you know that you're supposed to be doing what you're doing right now? Y'all, I look back on my life, and I look at, like, how when I was little, my fascination with beauty, my fascination with hair, my me literally being, I kid y'all not, I was in, I was in second grade living in Turkey at the time because I'm a military brat 
and we didn't have like you know Cartoon Network Disney Channel we didn't have all that we had like this very limited seven channel um network that was military controlled and very uh interesting any military brats out there back in the 80s and the 90s and early 2000s because I don't even know if this still exists but AFN y'all Comment below if y'all were watching AFN, okay, <laughs> on TV, on base. Anyway, so we had a very limited TV selection. So a lot of times I just had to entertain myself. So I would be in the bathroom just like mixing random things together, thinking that I was concocting hair products. Like it was crazy. Like I would literally mix like milk and lotion together and glue and like random things thinking that I was going to create something. Obviously it didn't, but like I was always creative. And thinking back to fourth grade, when I, my friends and my, and my sister knew that I was the one that was always having really funky hairstyles. I was always the one that just like was kind of weird, kind of like off on my own tangent as far as like my style went. Y'all like, I just, I was on my own wave and I see that looking back now and I'm like, I was always creative. I was always inspired to to be expressive through my hair, through my makeup, through my clothes. Like that's always been a part of me, but it took me a while to recognize that that was a part of my process. You know, if I would have just worn everything that everybody else was wearing or just thought that like I was doing too much to my hair and, and my, my style, then I would have never had the courage to upload on YouTube. I would have never had the courage to take risks with my hair and my style. I would have never been able to say, okay, I'm gonna try this style out. Maybe that wasn't a good look, but I'm gonna keep trying and find something else that works for me, you know? And so it's all about looking back and look how, how where you are now versus where you come from. And like, as a kid, a lot of things come to us when we're kids. And we can see things a lot more plain when we're children because we don't have all these like other societal and like um, expectations from like our, our our significant others, our, our our parents, our jobs and all this stuff. Like when you're a kid and you just gravitate towards certain things, that's that's your pureness coming out. That's what you're purely being pulled to those things. And um, I was just gra I, I was just pulled into beauty on so many levels, but never thought that this would be my life. How crazy is that? I never thought that I would be able to work in beauty, like legitimately have a career in beauty. I don't know why. I don't know why I never thought that for myself, but I didn't. It was like it was blocked for so long because I was so worried about trying to sustain and live a life that was like my parents, like my friends, like my sister, like this person, like that person. And it was like, stop. You got to live your life for you. You got to live your life for you. And ever since I made that decision, ever since I jumped off that ledge, y'all, things have been unbelievable because God does unbelievable things in your life when you trust him. When you give him your gifts and you decide to give your life to doing his work in your own way, God does things. You've got the desire for a reason. You've got the opportunity to learn for a reason. So use those things. Transfer those skills. There are so many skills that I got through going to school that helped me tremendously in this life. Organization alone. When you've got, I've got right now I've got... 10 different projects going on concurrently. 10 that I'm creating content for on a regular basis, that I'm posting for, that I'm thinking of ideas for constantly. How would I be organized if I didn't learn how to organize my class schedule? Organize all my homework for all those classes. Organize my classes, my extracurricular activities, and my personal life. If I didn't have training in school to do those things, I would not be successful doing what I'm doing now. So it's taking those years of me loving beauty and being gravitated towards beauty and being creative and being artistic and all that on top of me going and getting an education and going to the school and not just going to undergrad, but going and getting my master's, which also taught me a bunch of skills to now doing what I'm doing. And I already know that this is not it for me. I've got things coming. I know because I know my God, I got more things coming. And so I just wish and hope and pray that you all have that same sort of conviction that it's simple. 
if you let God lead your life, you're going to be good. Like you really are going to be good. And you and the worries and the, the confusion that you have now, they're going to be gone. And when they do arise, because God doesn't say that once you claim him to be the ruler of your life, that you're never going to be worried again, that you're never going to be confused again, that you're never going to be scared again. It means that he's going to give you the support and the tools and the calm that you need to get through those situations and get through the worry, get through the confusion, get through the storm so that you're ready for it because that's life. It's going to happen. But with God, you're going to be good. So that's it. That's my secret to being successful in life, being successful at YouTube, being successful at what I do. That's it. It's just God. That's it. I love y'all so much. I hope that you got something out of this video. I really, really, really do pray that whoever needed this, that this is the moment that you take a step back and recognize where you are, what you are capable of, and you start changing your mind first and then changing your actions. Because it's got to start up here, then it connects here, and then you can move forward. All right. Love you guys. Bye.